So, um, I had mentioned in the past, um, probably my last video, that I really wasn't happy with how the Windsor Newton, I mean, yeah, the Windsor Newton pigment markers react with Mitsuo Ida ink on the Windsor Newton pigment marker paper. And I said that I was going to pull out my light table and try a different track. So here's the illustration that I'm going to be using as my base. And I've already drawn an outline of the paper and I'm going to remove it. I'm going to commit sacrilege and remove it from my sketchbook, which is, it's painful for me. It really is. I had to think about it before coming on air. And I'm going to go ahead and tape that down on my, well, no, I'm not going to tape it on my light table because I want to be able to rotate the whole thing. But I am going to tape my pigment paper on top of it. And kind of line it up so it works with the illustration. And just use a little bit of tape to hold it in place, but hopefully not tear the paper. And I think I have a cat hair stuck. Yep. Always. That's how you know it comes from my studio. Fresh baked cat hair with every piece. And I don't normally use a light, um, a light box just because I like inking directly over my blue lines, but for this instance I thought it was worth trying because I watched, um, after I finished recording my video, I watched a few other people like Lumia Crescent uh, manipulate the pigment markers on the pigment marker paper and I saw that they weren't even inking, they were going over pencils and it was like, well, maybe that's what I should be, sort of the, the vein I should be going. But um, I, it's hard for me to let go and be kind of loose and gestural, so I have to have those inks in there somewhere, right? You guys probably know me pretty well by now. So here is my mixed set of Linder Newton pigment markers. I'm putting those off to the side, and here are my... Oh, I was sitting on my sketchbook. Here are my pigment markers. So let's get started. So nice thing about this is it's gonna blind me. I mean, I don't have to worry as much about um, the ink so I can do like flat applications of color and um, with this, you're going to want to check your, you're going to want to turn off your light table occasionally just to check and make sure that everything is looking right. Because the, the light coming from the light table is going to affect your vision, your perception of color. So that's how it looks right now. Um, let me get you, uh, all right, I got to pause this because my clamp is coming off for the second time. All right, gooseneck gooseneck clamp fix for a second time today and I've um, adjusted the camera so you guys are a little bit closer and I've um, turned off the light box so you can see there's still um, there is still some lines for lack of a better word um, I'm gonna try oh I'm gonna try something I haven't done before I'm gonna try to use the colorless blender to um, Hopefully, oh, it's just going to pick it up. Wow. Okay. That's interesting. Not what I had in mind. And my colorless blender is very, very wet. Very um, inky. And by doing that, you can see it causes the... Um, it causes the ink... The... the What's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Sorry. It's causing the pigment ink I'd already put down to kind of pull away from it. Um, and I don't yet know what solution there would be for that on this paper. Um, it did, it picks up 
the pigment, so I cleaned it off on a Viva paper towel. Um, any paper towel that doesn't have like shreddy little uh, paper particles is probably fine, or even a piece of scrap paper. And um, as you can see, you can actually see the line work somewhat from under the light table without it being on, but I thought it would be easier as, as we build up layers if I um, worked with the light table. See, once the light table's on, you can barely see the pigment marker. That makes a big difference, doesn't it? So remember to turn it off and on regularly to check your work. And I actually, um, in general, I don't work with a light table because they tend to give me migraines. So um, they're okay for sometimes, but I can't, I can't work with them all the time. And for those of you who might have more experience than me with using these markers who are watching this, if you happen to know how I can avoid this kind of streaking other than just building up my layers, I would appreciate you letting me know because I, I don't know, I'm not feeling it, you know. It's not a technique I particularly enjoy. I mean, with the colorless blender, you can even pick up color all the way back to the white of the paper. So it doesn't so much blend as it removes. As you can see down here on the legs and on our hand. So I'm gonna try and add a little bit of that back Maybe Winsor Newton needs to introduce a different kind of blending tool since this ink stays wet for so long on this paper. Maybe um, something that could just help push the pigments around. Because that isn't how the, the colorless blender works. As you can see, it's still very streaky. Um, and maybe a brush would help with that. However, I'm really happy not to have the smearing problems I was having with the ink. So that's already a score in my book. So there's a lot of a lot of pooling with the ink where um, it just sort of sits on the paper and looks um, kind of unprofessional and rough. I'm going to let that dry because um, as pigments, as inks dry, they tend to lighten in color and um, I'm going to continue working once that's dried. So I think I'm going to try and amend um, some of the disparity between light and dark with the white blender because it kind of, um, maybe I'll do it without the, the light table on because that makes it hard to see. It kind of um, will pick up some of the pigment and lighten areas. I probably should have used this instead of using the colorless blender, but I'd opted not to use the colorless blender in the last video I did with for you guys. So, um, cause I really do prefer the white. And so the white, all right, here's when you should be using each of these markers. When you're using a colored paper or a paper with a hue to it, you should probably use the colorless blender because it's gonna bring you back to the color of the page. 
if you're using, if you want actual white or white influence, then you should use the white blender because it is going to put down a white. It's even whiter than the page here. This doesn't have any, the colorless blender doesn't have any pigment in it. The white blender has white pigment in it. And it is really difficult, in my opinion, to layer colors on this paper because, see, uh, that's me trying to do like, um, I like to do like pink for the lips and the eyelids and for some of the shadow and for some of the blush. And um, it's not mixing and it's not layering, it's kind of replacing it, which doesn't really look right. So again, if you're more familiar with this product, and I've been trying to become familiar with this product as quickly as I can, um, but if, you're, if you've figured out a solution for this that doesn't involve switching paper, because I've already, I've already, I am already going to try other papers, but if you have solutions for this paper with these markers, I would really like to hear them because I am quickly running out of ideas for the combination. So that's how it looks now, which in my opinion, it kind of looks like a muddy mess. I'm gonna try to blend it out a little bit with the color I used originally, Light Sienna. So what might be the ticket with these markers is um, the same way I often use uh, watercolor markers where you have a palette on the side, probably preferably plastic, like clear plastic or white plastic or porcelain, something non-porous. And if you want to blend or transition colors, you probably scribble it on the side palette and um, apply it with the nib of your choice and then clean your nib afterwards. Um, and that kind of a technique would work really, really well with a brush marker, but um, it might not work so well with the hard chisel nib we currently have. So that's something maybe for Winsor Newton to keep in mind. It would certainly, having that as a working option would certainly make these markers a lot easier for me to use as um, an illustrator who works in a very particular kind of way. So I am going to um, I'm going to let this dry, I think, and um, I, I don't know, I'm not, like, I really, um, I really liked, comparatively, I liked how these markers handled on the Strathmore acrylic canvas paper uh, a lot better than I like how they're handling on this paper, because they were much easier to blend, and I didn't have these kind of pooling issues. And I think the, the pigment was still sitting on top of the paper. It just, it just handled differently. Which is, I mean, understandable because they're two different papers, but this is becoming kind of frustrating for me. I'm not one of those people who has to be good at something the first time. I'm 
those of you who've been following along with this for sure know this isn't the first time. It's just, I am really having a hard time figuring out how to use these markers in a way that is conducive to how I enjoy doing illustration. So when that happens, it's hard for me to find, to be able to endorse them, which is a shame, I mean, it's a shame and it's important to me to be able to endorse these markers because they're so, they're so different from everything else that's on the market right now. Um, and with markers, especially alcohol-based markers, you run into this tendency where everything ends up being the same thing. So I would rather an imperfect product that really brings something new to the market than the same alcohol markers we've been seeing with no real improvements and no real differences. So now that her skin is dry, I guess I'm going to start coloring in her shirt and hair bow maybe socks so since these markers have a tendency to replace color I think I'm going to be lazy and uh, color over the triangles which are going to be like multicolored triangles So that's what it looks like uh, when the lights turned off. As you can see, I kind of went outside the lines. So I'm going to clean that one up with the colorless blender, which did a much better job of picking up skin than it did of moving teal. So that's fun. And I guess I'm going to color her hair thing. I think I'm going to do it yellow. And I'm going to color the bottom of her shirt. I'm the, like the cuffs and the and my markers are really really runny I don't know if other people are having problems with that um I don't know if this is how they're supposed to function like I mean really runny like too much pigment on the page like it pools um, so I don't know if that's like my set or if everyone who has a set is having these problems I was kind of an early adopter I pretty much I had the skin tones on pre-order from Dick Blick and several of the colors on pre-order from Dick Blick and pretty much any time one of my local art stores uh, said they had them in stock I would go pick up markers so um, it could also be that Windsor Newton is still working out some of the the hiccups in these markers and that's just what I get for jumping on the bandwagon very early another part of the problem as it makes as the paper gets wet it pulls it buckles and pulls which makes it harder to see my inks even though I'm using a light table so that's something else to keep in mind but if your markers aren't as runny as mine it might not even be a problem for you and the pink isn't quite as runny as the purple was it's still pretty runny though
and I should state that the markers, with the exception of some that were given to me, uh, they'd already been opened, um, at Hands On Creativity at Plaza in Nashville. The markers were all purchased out of my own pocket, but the marker paper I'm using was sent to me from Windsor Newton after I'd written to them asking what inks to use on, on their paper. Um, so keep that, I mean, if that affects your opinion of my review, that's something you should know. Although it isn't changing um, my frustration at dealing with the product, it, I have been spending more time with this paper than I normally would um, if paper behaved this way and I was paying for it out of pocket. So since it was a care of, I am trying to um, find a use case for it instead of dismissing it. I, mean, I try not to dismiss any product unfairly, but I am probably spending more time trying to get this paper to work than I would. I've also noticed that the ink, um, the ink flow isn't anywhere near even. Um, my, my fine tips on these markers, even though, I mean, it looks like I display them. Oh, you guys can't even see them. I keep them horizontal, even though the case is, um, it can be used as like an easel case. I only have it in that position when I'm actively working with them. I store them horizontally. So the ink flow should be equal and it's not. And that is a problem because it means the color you get from each end is different. And I know some people seem to think that's a great thing. That's good for you guys, but I want my color to be consistent. paper is so wet it's very hard for me to see the inks underneath. At least it's not smearing as much. I also have a problem with when I uncap my markers. Uh, it sometimes pulls the nibs out. So I don't know if that's a normal thing. If anyone else is having that problem, I don't like that. I don't think that's like a good thing. I think it's a problem. So um, that's my official complaint about it. And what you see me doing is I am pushing the paper down against the inks. Actually, on camera, you can see the inks a whole lot better than I can see the inks in real life because it, the camera has compensated for the light. Whereas my eyes are struggling to keep up. A little bit jealous of that. So your view is actually better than mine. This is what it looks like when the light is off. The face looks really muddy to me because I'm having a lot of trouble um, getting a clean blend on it since I used like three colors on it from my portrait pack.
at least if you have colors sort of in the same family, you can very easily blend them together like I'm doing with this uh, lighter orange. I just applied a darker orange and I went back in with my Windsor yellow and sort of blended it out a little bit. Not as much as I would have liked, but a little bit. And the light is off. The white on the hands and arms and face looks really obvious. Is kind of frustrating. It's kind of a Mabel-y sweater. We've been catching up on Gravity Falls. So I thought it would be fun to draw a Kara in that kind of an outfit surrounded by birthday cake and sprinkles. So as you see, it does layer somewhat, although, I mean, these are like very chunky color transitions. You can see where there's like additional paint, pigment, I'm sorry, rather like it's just not like a smooth blend that you would get from any other brand of alcohol-based markers, which is fine. I mean, if you're looking for something that's like really painterly, these are probably the marker you're going to want to grab. But if you're used to alcohol markers and the way alcohol markers perform, these markers might be a little frustrating to learn how to use because you basically got to change how you do everything. I also just personally don't necessarily feel like the product is there yet. Like the, the paper or the tips on the markers, for example. Maybe there needs to be um, some accessories that also kind of ease this transition into this new kind of marker. And these are supposed to be light fast for a hundred years, so that'll be interesting to see. I'm probably going to do some swatches and leave them out in the sun and see if, uh, it, how, I mean, I can't, I'm not going to simulate it for a hundred years, but I'll simulate it for a few months and see how that goes. Maybe the top of the cake should be yellow. I know some of you are probably thinking that the majority of my problem comes from the fact that I'm using the chisel nib to put color in. And I'm using the chisel nib because it puts out more pigment and uh, because like my chisel nibs are like almost putting out no pigment at all. and. Um, because they're less scratchy, believe it or not. The, well, probably believe it. The bullet nibs on these are very scratchy in my opinion. So um, I avoid them when I can because they're gonna tear up the paper. I'm not gonna have a choice though on the cake bits around her face. And I can't even see where I put them because it's pulled up away from the paper so much from saturation.
really need to just leave her face alone because the more I try to fix it, the worse it's getting. So my complaints about these markers so far, no brush tip, number one, blending is really unusual at best, even on the paper they recommend you use. I can't find an ink for it. Uh, massive difference in color and um, saturation between the bullet nib and the chisel nib. paper designed to be used with these markers uh, buckles when you use these markers on the paper. So those are all things I'd like to see. Another YouTuber um, had mentioned that she would like to see uh, maybe a thicker paper with these markers, and I agree, because it can't stand up to the, the moisture in the markers. I don't know if that would solve the other problems, but it would start to solve one. Kind of a sizable problem so in my opinion because I am using the paper that is designed for these markers and I'm having a hard time um, I've used these markers on other papers uh, and I can't say that they blend any better on this paper than they do on some of the other things I've tried um, so that's not really in this marker of paper's favor and this paper doesn't work well in my opinion for the kind of illustration I do it doesn't work well with Copics it doesn't work well with water-based markers it's hard to find inks that don't smear all over the place as soon as you start adding color on top of them So my number one issue is really with this paper. I keep having to push it down to see if I've missed any triangles. Looks like I got them. I think my favorite paper with these um, was the Strathmore paper for acrylics. Look, see, I'm trying to put the purple down. That's what I get from the bullet nib. You can't even see it. But when I put it down with the chisel nib, that's what I get. Neither of those are the color on the barrel. And I know with um, pigment markers, sometimes, like, when I reviewed the, the stress markers, the review is up on my blog now, in case you guys are interested. Those are also pigment-based markers, but they're water-based. And, um... There, the small tip is practically useless because nothing comes out of it most of the time.
so I think it might be an issue with, um, and see this one's working so well, it's like leaking. Um, I think it might be an issue with pigment markers in general and not just um, these. The solution to that could be to have a large brush tip, which the distress markers do have, and then um, have a chisel tip on the other end. Um, and a well-made brush tip will actually allow you to get pretty decent details. kind of have a feeling that's the best I'm going to be able to do with these on this paper. Maybe add some shadow under the, the food and under Kara. And hope this didn't bleed through so I can still use the inks because I haven't scanned them yet. I mean, I really think with the way these markers are currently designed, they're more um, they're more useful for like gestural things, like so gesture sketches or field sketches, um, and less useful for refined things. It, just because of how the markers are are currently the the kind of bodies they have, the properties they currently have. Um, if you are looking for markers for more detailed illustration. I can currently recommend you look at, um, most alcohol-based markers are going to perform better than this. Um, also, uh, there are certain brands of water-based markers. I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time thinking. It's a combination of getting over feeling like garbage, because I was sick yesterday, and, um, trying to do this and talk at the same time. I can barely chew gum and talk at the same time, so. If you are looking for better illustration markers, though, you should check out my blog because I have a lot of re recommendations, more than I care to list right here. I'm just gonna try and um, fill in some of the areas that got missed because I couldn't see them or need better delineation. Oh, I haven't even finished her hair, but otherwise I'm pretty much done with this. So that will probably be my last video using this type of Windsor Newton paper. They recently sent me their marker paper, like just plain marker paper. Um, so I'm kind of excited about giving that a shot and I'll probably pull out the, the pigment markers and mess around with them on that as well. Cause I think I might get better results. And I also have a video that should be going up, it'll be up by the time you guys see this one, uh, where I test these markers out on a bunch of papers, and I'm just like freehanding flowers, and none of them turned out very good. I talk a lot in that video about like having to be comfortable with failing in front of people, because I considered all of those bouquets a failure. But I mean, it was mostly just to show how different papers handle these markers. So if you're interested in finding a paper that might work for you a little bit better, oh man, I like totally missed her eyebrow because I'm doing it with a chisel nib. Uh, if you're interested in a video that will help you find a paper that might work for you for these markers, you should check that out. considering I spent, um, gee, let's do some quick math time. I bought 
the skin tones is a set, and I don't remember what I paid for them. But these markers typically retail at um, $4.99, depending on where you get them. And I don't think I got any of them on too good a sale. So, <laughs> let's do some math. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. This is a $40 handful of markers. 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. So I've spent at least 100 on these markers. I just quit at 100. Um, you better believe I'm going to try to make find something that they work on or something that they're good at or something that I can do with them because I'm not going to just let them rot. But it also means that if you illustrate in a way that is similar to how I do illustrations, if you use markers and paints the same way I do, I highly recommend you hold off on buying these markers as exciting as they are, as novel as they are, and write to Windsor Newton and request that they introduce a brush tip to their markers because that is going to make a really big difference for a lot of us between something that you're forcing into a specific mold and something designed for the kind of illustration you do. Um, and considering they have brush tips on their other marker offerings, their watercolor markers and their brush markers, um, there isn't, unless it's like a pigment issue, there really isn't a good reason why they're not offering these in brush markers yet, especially considering as most artists and illustrators use the, the brush tip, purchase the brush tip. I know there's some who like um, architectural illustrators, um, architects, what am I even talking about? They'll, they'll use the chisel nib. Product designers will use the chisel nib. Some fashion illustrators use the chisel nib. I understand that there are people who do use the chisel nib. What I'm suggesting is we have a brush and a chisel nib so we can fill in large areas and also do fine details without the bullet nib scratching away the pigment. Um, so yeah, I my recommendation is you hold off for a little while until they implement those changes or until you have an art style that is more, if you, until you have a specific case use for this that utilizes these markers to the best of their ability. Otherwise, you're going to be frustrated and you're going to feel like you spent your money on something that you can't use. So, um, I hope my review helped. I hope my series of reviews on these markers and this paper have helped you make a decision, hopefully helped you spend your money wisely buying supplies that you are prepared to use. Um, if you like this video, please share it with your friends, share it on your social networks, anywhere you have friends who are interested in art, please consider sharing it because that helps me out. Um, hit like and consider subscribing to my channel because I plan on doing a lot more videos of this nature in the future. Um, and as always, if you like my content, please check out my blog, natosoup.blogspot.com. That's N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P, period, blogspot.com. I have six years' worth of art supply reviews and tutorials up there that you can check out. And if you have any questions, please email me or leave me a comment. If there's anything specific you'd like to see, let me know. I'll try to accommodate you. Um, if you guys don't talk to me, the only thing I can do is guess at what you'd like to see. But if you talk to me, I can make specific videos for that content. So it's, uh, I hope it's been an informative video for you guys. Bye.